Welcome back. This week is gonna be a bit of a fixing video. Last Friday, we picked up a jumping jack tamper in order to save our backs from the immense amount of tamping and compacting we're doing when backfilling our electric trench. But I didn't know that it wasn't running. Uh, the, the ad said that this thing was running and when we got there, it was a bunch of drunk guys selling it and they told me it hadn't ran in two years and that the ad was actually wrong. So I decided to buy it anyway. It turned over and it is a little Honda engine. It does have an obvious oil leak. It's certainly not the prettiest thing I've ever seen, but I think I can get it running and I can definitely sell it running for just about as much as I paid for it. I got this thing for 350 bucks. It's about as cheap as they get. New, they're like well over a thousand dollars, probably close to 2000. So I think I can get this to be a good deal and save us some work in the process. Here's a closer look at it. Definitely a little bit rough around the edges. Duct tape on the handle. Obviously an oil leak at some point in its life. The guy did say he put a new boot on it. Uh, one issue that he did say it had was that the uh, carburetor was constantly spilling gas into the in the engine oil. The carburetor probably needs a good clean. I think it's probably a stuck float valve and, uh, and I'll definitely change the oil while I'm at it too. But overall, it seems like it's in okay shape. The fuel tank was dry, which is actually a good thing. It didn't have gas sitting in it for the past two years or so that it's been sitting. Uh, it does have a little screen or something that was floating around in there. I'm gonna have to pick that thing out. But overall, I think I'm just gonna clean the carb, make sure everything is kind of looking good and working and uh, see if I can fire it up. Should have brought this baby with me when I went and checked it out. I'm gonna do that right now, see what compression we're running. A Little bit of carbon, but overall looks okay. Okay, my compression tester isn't even close to small enough for these spark plug threads, so the compression test is out the window. Let's see if I can get the oil to drain out of this thing. I think you just tip it. I don't know. Holy crap. This thing was definitely full of oil, but that's fully drained and it's like not even half a quart. These little tiny engines use like almost nothing. This really is a very tiny engine. The whole cylinder is like basically the size of my fist. Now I'm gonna pull this air filter off and start digging into this carb, see if I can figure out what was allegedly dumping gas into the oil and get it all cleaned out and ready to go. I've always thought carburetors are like the coolest little machines ever. Requires no power and mixes air and fuel together really precisely just with a vacuum. This is a really small one. I mean, that throttle valve is like not even the size of a dime. And actually it looks pretty good. It doesn't really look too gummed up. This will be the telltale though. We're gonna take off this float bowl. Ooh, yikes. Okay, yep, that's pretty dirty. That definitely had some old fuel sitting in it for a while. Here's our float and our needle. Just didn't appear to be stuck stuck, but oh shoot. This little guy right here is that needle and if that thing doesn't totally seat in this hole where my pinky is, gas will always pour out of the tank and fill up this bowl until it comes right out through the throat of the carburetor and right into the engine, not atomized with air like it should be, just raw fuel. And then it can work its way into the oil, which is not good. Yikes, yeah, this thing is definitely a little bit crusty in here though. We're gonna have to do some TLC on this baby. Handy dandy carb cleaner. It's kind of rusty. I'm not sure if this is gonna work at all, but it's worth a shot. Now here's something kind of interesting. I found this thing's actually got two air filters. This one here goes to what I guess is the, uh, the gearbox mechanism down here that does the jumping jack motion. And then it's got another one right here that goes right to the engine. So I guess this is kind of to keep that gearbox cool. They just run some, uh, 
some filtered air through here, which is interesting. I think I'm gonna pop this lid off here just to see what's going on in here and make sure that uh, I'm not missing anything crazy. This cover started to get really hard to get off and I realized it was connected to the crankshaft and I quickly decided this was not a good idea. So I decided to leave my curiosity alone there and let that be. And in the meantime, I finished cleaning this thing and I think I realized what the problem was. When I took this off, this float just fell out and I think it's because the little pin that's supposed to go right in here is missing. I think I'll just have to fabricate some pin in here and that will keep the, uh, the needle seated there. And here's my solution. Little cotter pin. I'm just gonna trim the end off that with a pair of diagonal cutters. And that's gonna be my axle for the float. Hopefully it works. I think it should work. It's all back together, complete with the zip tie holding the air filter cover on. I think it's time to throw some gas in it, give it a pull. Is it a bad idea to start it in the barn? It's raining outside and I don't really wanna try it out there. Almost forgot to put oil back in it. That would have been bad. Crap, it's leaking. I was afraid it was gonna leak there. <laughs> it's, a, it's an old ass fuel line. Well, that certainly isn't good. Got a nice big leak here and another one here. Actually like three, it's leaking back here by the fuel filter too. Okay, take two on the gas thing. I had some fuel line in stock, just enough actually to replace those couple quarter inch lines. Put some more gas in, it doesn't seem to be leaking at this point. Now I'm gonna try to start it up. Hey! Okay, my gimbal went completely haywire, so I'm gonna try this again, but it seems to be running really well. I'm actually pretty surprised. Fast forward today, got some daylight after work. We're going to trench tomorrow, so I'm gonna try to test this thing outside right now, make sure it's good to go. Nikes. Is that what it does? Yeah. Show it again. What? It's not running quite right yet. <laughs> Well, it ran pretty decently for like 30 seconds and now it's not starting again. I guess I'm back to the drawing board. Hopefully we're not gonna be hand tamping still tomorrow, but there's a strong possibility that will still be the case. It's clear the carburetor still is having issues. It'll run for like two seconds then stall or it'll run until I put it under load and it's only running on choke. So I'm gonna take this all back apart again, try to clean it even better look for any other signs of issues, maybe replace some gaskets and see if it works. The second time around cleaning this, I did a much more thorough job. I took the top off of it and I used compressed air rather than just carb cleaner to clean out all the passages. Okay, I feel like I've done a lot better job this time around cleaning this carburetor. And I did find one other sm slight issue. This gasket between the carburetor and the engine right here has a small tear in it. So that may be letting air get in where it's not supposed to, which is behind the carburetor. I might have to figure something out to replace this. It's also kind of mush too. So if I'm still having issues with, after cleaning this carb extra good, I'm gonna have to replace this gasket. Shoo. All right, my DeWalt clamp holding the air filter on did not really work that well, but good news. Looks like it's running. Not bad. I ran it for a good while just to make sure and it dug about a 
I don't know, four inch deep hole in the ground from just sitting there stomping. So I'm gonna call it a mild success. I'm glad I got that running now. It's like 7.30 p.m. We gotta be out trenching in less than 12 hours in the morning. And I really wanted to have that running to make our money worth it because we did spend 350 bucks on that thing. So luckily it runs, it works. I think it's gonna save our backs. Thanks for following along. I really appreciate it. And there will be plenty more content to come as we're just getting started with this build process. As always, stay tuned on the socials. We post a lot more frequently there. But until then, I will see you next time.